they say it's very difficult to grow in the same environment that you got sick in. And so, um, yeah, I'm all about change, uprooting, and a lot of people call it running, you know, running away from things. But I think it's running towards your true self. And we need to get out of these toxic ass environments and not be afraid to do so. We're not trees, you know, we can leave at any time. And um, yeah, I'm very grateful that I had those opportunities to, to leave my hometown. Hey family, I'm Jazzy Moss and you're doing life with Lakeisha on Living Her Truth. Welcome to the Living Her Truth podcast, where we have honest conversations about what it means to live a purpose-driven life. I am your host, Lakeisha Wooder from LakeishaWooder.com, the place where women receive the tools necessary to feel seen, heard, and supported while pursuing their purpose. And now every week, you'll learn those same tools through candid and transparent conversations. Hey family, welcome to another episode. I am so excited that you are here. I do not take it lightly that you decided to hit that play button and spend about an hour of your time with me. So with that being said, I want you to know that I'm 100% invested in your self-awareness journey. So you better believe that every week I'm bringing my A game for providing you the tools necessary to live a more fulfilled, purpose-driven life. So family, I want to remind you to please take a moment to leave a five-star rating and subscribe on your favorite podcast platform. As you know, I set a lot to go to touch one million hearts within the first two years, and I can only do it with your help. So please remember to download each episode, share the conversation with at least four people you know, and repost on your favorite social media platform. Also, Don't forget to click the join the community link in the show notes so we can stay connected and continue the conversation. So today is week five in our Strategize Your Vision series. And in case this is your first time listening to the Live Not You podcast, let me brief you to catch you up. So this series that we're doing is based on my Master Life class, Strategize Your Vision. And in my Master Life class, I teach you the step-by-step formula for building a rock solid strategy to manifest your vision. So for the next eight weeks at this time, we're going to continue the conversations about the blessing and embracing your purpose and how your mental wellness, safety and security, personal development and professional growth, spirituality, faith, and support team building, how all these things play a part in your decision to operate in purpose. So week one, okay, I lay out the groundwork for the 12 weeks and we deep dive into purpose. We talked about what it means, why it's important and the impact that it will have on your life. Now, week two, we talked about how to recalibrate our most valuable tool, our brain, so we can identify purpose-driven opportunities for manifesting the life that we want and then take action, okay? We're not just, you know, noticing and identifying opportunities, but we're going to take action on them as well because execution is important for manifestation, all right? That was week two. So in week three, we talked about what the process can look like for operating in purpose with actionable steps and mindset resets that you can implement immediately. And then last week, we talked about how to pull power from my pain. So self-doubt, shame, or insecurities don't cloud our judgment for operating in purpose. So if you miss any of these episodes, go back and listen. And then listen a second time for taking notes. So don't forget to tag me as well on social media at Lakeisha Wooder to let me know your greatest takeaway. What gems did you pick up from the conversations? Because I really want to know. Okay, this week, we're going to have a very fun yet serious conversation about embracing change, especially when it comes to our home environment. I had such a great time having this conversation with Jazzy. If you want to see the video version of me laughing in the background, then you can go to facebook.com forward slash living our truth or head on over to youtube.com forward slash Akeisha Woodard for the video version of this episode. 
let me tell you, this conversation was probably more so for me <laughs> than it was for you because I really have been seriously contemplating the decision to live outside of the country. You know, Jeremy and I have casually talked about it, but not in depth about it. You know, it's just pretty much me bringing it up to him. So when I went into this conversation, I went into it with expectation and an open mind, if you will, because I know the importance of changing your home environment and the huge impact it can have on your life. So I don't have any problem moving from state to state, city to city, if it's divinely instructed. And now I'm sitting here or have been wondering lately if this is possibly the next move, if you know, Jeremy and I living outside of the country is the next move for us. And maybe you had those same thoughts as well, you know, and you probably be a little bit too afraid to even do anything about it. Even if it's just, even if it's just you having the thoughts of, okay, I need to move to another state or to another city, but you've just been too afraid to move. Okay. This conversation is for you. Even if you're single or if you're married with children, this conversation is for you as well. If you want to live outside of the United States, I think you should go for it. Or if you want to move out of your current state, like go from Texas to Georgia, I think you, sh I think you should go for it. My conversation with Jazzy would definitely give you some insight and actionable steps to make that leap. OK, the actual steps that she gives you, even though she's talking specifically about leaving the United States and going to another country, you can use these same steps if you want to go from state to state. All right. OK, so definitely listen to this conversation with an open mind and grab your pen and your paper to take notes. But before we get into it, I want to officially introduce Jazzy to you. Jazzy Moss is a multifaceted expat from South Central L.A., and she currently lives in Vietnam. She's a holistic transformation coach, the owner of Black Digital Nomad, which is a hub to empower people to escape America and live bravely, boldly, and fully, freely abroad through masterclasses, one-on-one -on -one consultations, her YouTube channel, and her blog. She's also a stand-up comedian and MC and the owner of Jazzy by Nature, a natural skincare line for expats. Her story from probation to passports reminds us that we can transfer our lives no matter what mistakes we may have made. And for more information on Jazzy, you can visit www.blackdigitalnomad.com for even more information on how to make that transition to another country. But in the meantime, you know, to find out more about life outside of the United States, Right now, then listen to my conversation with Jazzy Moss. Jazzy, thank you so much for saying yes to having this conversation with me today. Yes, thanks for having me. I'm super excited. I'm excited about this conversation. I, um, <laughs> I was talking to my I was talking to my husband um, before we we you know before we jumped on, and I told him I was just like, babe. I said, now this conversation I'm about to have, you may want to be worried because I'm about to talk to the girl about living abroad. Now tell me, how can I be a black woman living in Thailand? And he was just like, oh, Lord. <laughs> get on board. Get on board. I'm like, I, was, I told him, I'm like, girl, how you get your husband to leave? Like, so you better be worried. He's like, oh, Lord, because I've been um, talking to him about moving over to Thailand. And, you know, at first it was kind of like, a little bit of a joke because I follow Amber, which is how we met. And I'll go into that a little bit. And so I saw her because she documented on Instagram when she first left and went abroad and Thailand was her first stop. And I just fell in love with Thailand just through the videos and the pictures that she was sharing. And I'm just like, man, this thing's pretty cool. It's really chill and, and relax. And so it started off as a joke, but Everything that happened in 2020 with all of this mess, I'm like, man, maybe I do need to go over to Thailand and like rest my nerves. <laughs> Get out if you can. Yes, yes, yes. Thailand is amazing. It is super relaxing. Um, I fell in love with Thailand. I now live in Vietnam, but um, that is where I met Amber as well. Um, and yeah, Thailand is a vibe. It is really a vibe. 
Hey family, quick announcement. If you're ready to go deeper and would love to continue the conversation outside the podcast, then I have something just for you. I'm creating a safe, judgment-free community of like-minded people to grow and build the support team that we need to operate in purpose. If you want to join me, please visit livingherttruthpodcast.com and then click the join community button so we can partner together on your self-awareness journey. I am looking forward to getting to know each and every one of you. I am so excited to deep dive into your purpose and we're going to have such a great time, you guys. I look forward to seeing you in the group. Now, back to the conversation. Mm-hmm. I could tell. I could tell from uh, from her Instagram stories and, and videos and pictures that that she would that she would share. But I'm super excited about this about this conversation because I'm always talking about. Because essentially, yes, we're going to talk about living abroad. But essentially, this conversation is really going to be about having a healthy home environment and being okay with embracing change and changing up the home environment if that's what you need to do. Um, and this is like so important because as a self-awareness coach, this is something that I help my clients with all the time. I help them to really evaluate their home environment because if you don't have peace in your home, it's going to be really hard and really difficult for you to show up and be your true authentic self out in the world. Home has to be together. If there's peace at home, you're more likely to operate in purpose when you're outside of the house. And you'll be amazed at how many people who have it on their heart, they have this tug on their heart to literally leave the country and they're too afraid to do so, you know? So having that conversation with you, you're a black woman over in another country. I'm like, yes, this is the perfect opportunity to really like talk about it from a different perspective. Because even with me along my journey, I had to move several times within the United States born and raised in Chicago Heights, Illinois. So I went from Illinois to Minnesota to Georgia to Texas. But there are some people who have never left their hometown. Right. Like, I've run into people, I'm in Houston, Texas now. I know people who's never left the, the state of Texas. Right. Have no interest to do so. And not to say that you have to leave, you know, to be successful, but I just want to talk to the people who feel it like there's a there's a feeling in their gut that they need to leave and they're too afraid to do so those are the people yeah. I want us to talk to today yeah I think that's uh very important I'm from south central LA but I moved to Houston Texas at 18 mm. and then I moved to Philly for a little bit and then back to Houston then back to Philly then then back to Houston and um yeah, even that change, those changes, I think, well, I know prepared me for this life abroad anyway. It's just knowing that I needed to get the hell out of South Central, being comfortable to do so and taking that opportunity. And um, I look back at some of my family members. I know that she respect y'all. Y'all listen to it. I love y'all. However, um, I can see the difference in our mindsets and our growth um, with me leaving that environment because they say it's very difficult to grow in the same environment that you got sick in. And so, um, yeah, I'm all about change, uprooting, and a lot of people call it running, you know, running away from things, but I think it's running towards your true self and we need to get out of these toxic ass environments and not be afraid to do so. We're not trees, you know, we can leave at any time. And, um, yeah, I'm very grateful that I have those opportunities to to leave my hometown. Oh yeah, I totally agree with you. It's not it's not running because me leaving the heights gave me exposure to something different than what I knew. Because all I knew was was the heights, right? So these dreams, aspiration of of being Perry Mason. It was like, how the hell am I going to be Perry, Perry Mason? Like, this is what I, I have this dream. I have this aspiration because people say I need this dream. But how do I do that? Man, I needed to get up out of the heights to see something different. You know, so I, I, I agree. It's all about it's all about exposure. Not to say that some people are not running. Some people do that. But that's not what we're talking about. And everywhere you go, there you are, you know. So mm -hmm. that's something that I've learned. But it's also helped me. Um, pull back layers and get to my true self um, 
So maybe I started running in the beginning, but I think sometimes you just need to get the hell out the environment that you're in. Sure. I agree. <laughs> I agree 100%. And, and that's what uh, that's what I want us to get into today. But before we really dive into the conversation, I just like to tell everybody how I come to know the person that I'm, that I'm speaking with. And this conversation is no different. So you guys, I was a part of a 5 a.m. Miracle Morning Challenge that Amber, Amber, the person that we were talking about just a few minutes ago, she did this 5 a.m. challenge based off of Miracle Mornings. Uh, I believe somebody has recommended that book here on the podcast, guys. But if not, I'll make sure Miracle Morning is in the Audible recommendations that's in the show notes. But she based this 5 a.m. challenge off of Miracle Mornings, which is a really good book if you haven't read or listened to it yet. And Jazzy was one of the speakers. And I was just super excited to you know, for your particular day to come because you were to talk to us about um, the art of finding beauty in our story. Now, I was excited for all of the speakers, but I was really excited for your day in particular because I'm all about sharing my story. Um, I was sexually abused for eight years with my mother's husband. And so I share my story. Like my story is the basis of my coaching business because you, well, you probably wouldn't be surprised at this point because it's 2020, but there's so many women out there who were sexually abused as a child who never received healing. So it's a part of my purpose to share my story and share the journey and give them an example, give them exposure to someone who has gone through this trauma and has come, you know, come on the other side of it. Like people need to see that. Not just women, people need to see that. So I was hyped. I was hyped for your section for, for your particular day because of, because of the connection. And I'm just like, Oh yeah, this is, this is going to be, this is going to be good. So I, I was super excited, but I'll, probably never forget how you started your talk off because it was just so freaking it was just so freaking powerful and I'm probably going to uh probably going to butcher it but you know you started off by asking us like what was a valuable lesson that you learned as a child right yeah what are the values yeah something your mother the first thing you remember your mother teaching you um, yes yeah First thing, right? And so for me, I typed in the first thing that my grandmother, because my mom was really young when she had me, she was 16. So uh, I was pretty much raised by my, by my grandmother. I was my grandmother's child. So I wrote in with my gra- the first lesson that my grandmother taught me, which was can't is not a word. So every time I would say I can't, my grandmother would say, can't is not a word. Now go do what I told you to do. And that has stuck with me to this day, you know, even right now, when I find myself saying, Oh my God, I can't do this. I hear my grandmother's voice in my head. Can it's not a word. So, you know, ultimately it taught me how to take action fearfully move scared. It's okay. Just try it anyway. You know? Yes. So we all putting in our little, our little lessons and stuff. You know, we getting all deep. <laughs> What are what are little lessons? And then Jazzy tells us about the, the you know the first valuable lesson that her mom taught her. Can you share with the people what your mom taught you? <laughs> At seven years old. Yeah, she had the story of me being seven and my mom always um, rewarding me with a gift on Fridays if I got a hundred percent on my spelling test. And this particular Friday, her taking me to KB Toy Store in the Crenshaw Plaza in L.A. And um, telling me to walk into the store and get whatever I wanted and walk out as she stood outside of the store. And I did exactly that. And I remember my mom's face lighting up as if I had just like, you know, really did something good. Um, And I remember bonding with my mom that day. Um, But my mom was on drugs. So... I watched her shoplift a lot. And um, yeah, that was one of the, the values that she instilled in me. And so my story is always reminding people that, you know, sometimes we didn't get those valuable lessons from our parents, you know, um, and it's as we grow up, we have to unlearn and relearn things because 
then as adults, we're responsible for our lives, right? So I'm in jail now and I'm making bad decisions, but my mom is now sober, living a good life, and I'm have and I'm responsible for my decisions now. So I had to take full responsibility for my life as an adult and start to make better choices. And that's how I'm here today, living abroad. But yeah, I got in a lot of trouble um, as an adult, um, teen, and in my early adulthood. And I was always blaming my mom, like, well, my mama did this, and my daddy did this, and my mama did this, and, and the probation officer wasn't trying to hear that. The judge don't want to hear that. Um, so I had to say, you know what, I can change my life at any given time. And it was time to do so, especially when I was facing that, when I was on probation for five years after doing 60 days house arrest and 15 weeks in um, jail, 15 weekends. So yeah, it's, it's no matter where you come from and the values that were instilled in you, um, you can take responsibility for your life and change it. You know, okay, so you guys, when I say 5 a.m. Miracle Morning Challenge, 5 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. So I'm on Central Standard Time. So it was four o'clock in the morning for me. When I tell you, I was like, wait a minute. Did her mom say it? Just walk? Just walk out of walk out the store. Did I just hear that? Because you know it's early in the morning. We have sleep. <laughs> I'm like, I'm like, oh. Okay, and then she started, you know, explaining what she just, what she just explained, and we, I, I can't speak for everybody else, but I was just like, <laughs> wide open, I'm like, okay, just go walk right on now, all right, okay, moms, okay, if that's what you, okay, okay, you, you know, you, you teach what you know, right? <laughs> <laughs> not, to, not to make light of the situation, but sometimes you just gotta laugh without crying, right? Right, yeah. That's gonna be my Netflix special. Uh, same thing, I make you laugh, I make you cry. Um, so yeah, I mean, it's just those are the things that a lot of those are the stories that a lot of people have, um, especially mm -hmm. coming from certain environments, underdeveloped environments, and things like that. But um, yeah, they can hinder us or they can push us forward to live fully and, and freely. Um, and that's what I had to let it do for me because I got tired, sick and tired of being sick and tired mm -hmm. and of making excuses and of getting in trouble and feeling stuck in life. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, I'm grateful that my mindset is the way that it is because I don't have to be a victim of that. Ooh, because I don't have to be a victim. Yes, yes. And that's something that, you know, that's, 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 that's a good perspective to have something on what we can pull from trauma, because when you go through trauma, and you heal from it, then you don't have to be a victim to the next trauma, because let's just be real, it's always going to be something traumatic. Hello, when a whole year in a pandemic going on year two, um, you know, that was traumatic. But we have the choice on whether or not we're going to be a victim. So when you go through trauma, you heal from it. It's literally preparing you. And I have to say that your life is just going to be in shambles forever. But it happens at the end of the day. It happens. So and we have the we have the free will to choose whether or not we're going to be a victim or or are we going to be a are we going to be a survivor? So what was that? What was that pivotal point or moment that you said, okay, I need to start taking responsibility for my life and stop blaming my parents. Cause that's, that's something else too, that we do. We tend to blame everybody else, but that blame keeps us in victim mode. Absolutely. Yeah. So, um, I remember I was, um, like I had mentioned earlier, I had gotten a charge, uh, my second DUI. And so I was, um, sentenced to 15 weekends in jail where you go to jail for 48 hours so that you can still maintain your life outside of jail and then 60 days house arrest and five years probation and um i was renting um an apartment from my friend and i was also working with her and she got mad at me about something and was like you gotta go and you can't work for me anymore and so i was like okay i need to move out and i had to move out soon so i was living in philly at the time and my cousin lived in Delaware. So I just, you know, called her and was like, hey, can I stay with you for a while? She's like, yeah, of course. Mm -hmm. So I stayed with her. And if you guys are not familiar with the tri-state area, Philly and Delaware are literally like 30 minutes away. So yeah, it's a different state, mm -hmm. but it's very close. So it would literally take me 30 minutes, 32 minutes to get to her house, to my probation officer's office. And so I went to my appointment 
And every time I go, my probation officer asks me for my address. And so I told her like, oh, I had to move. You know, I'm staying with my cousin temporarily in Delaware. And she was like, no, that's not going to work. Um, that's a violation. You cannot live outside of the state. And I was like, I know, but it's 32 minutes away, you know? And she's like, no, hold on. And um, she printed out some paperwork and she handed me a list of homeless shelters. And she was like, here, you know, find a place and go there because these are in Philly. And I was like, wait a minute, you, you mean to tell me you want me to go stay in a homeless shelter for some shit I did two years ago versus staying with my cousin? 30 minutes away. 30 minutes away? He's like, I'm sorry, but it's a violation of your probation. Um, you cannot live outside of the state of Pennsylvania. And I was like, ma'am, it's 32 minutes away. You know, I'm here. And she was like, nah, like, here's a list. Um, find somewhere, call these numbers and see if they have a bed for you. And that was the aha moment for me where I was like, you did this to yourself, Jazz, regardless of me feeling like, um, this, these conditions were outrageous, right? That was the law. And I broke the law. Um, I was sentenced, you know, and I did what I did. And this was the time that I had to serve because of the crime that I committed. So, um, and I made the choice to drink and drive. And that's the choice that I made often, um, being an alcoholic. And so it was like, okay, here it is, like I'm constantly blaming my mom, but now at this point, my mom had been sober for over 10 years, I think maybe 15 years sober. She has 22 years now. And my dad was oh, living his life, doing whatever he's doing. And I'm the one sitting in my probation officer's office about to go have to live in a homeless shelter because of the choices I've made. So who am I, you know, I can continue to blame these people or I can say, you know what? it's time to start making some better choices because you are um, dealing with the consequences of them, nobody else. So um, that was a aha moment for me. I ended up telling her, gave, gave her the address in Philly because I wasn't going to know the homeless shelter. Um, but that was really the aha moment for me where I was like, this is all you jazz. Like these are based on the decisions that you've made as an adult and you're responsible for them, right? I mean, I can't tell the judge, but, 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 that day when I was seven, you know, my mom, you know, go get hurt. Like, they know, they not hearing that. <laughs> Can nobody do the crime for you? The same way with illness. Yeah. I'm a holistic health coach, and I always tell people, like, regardless of whatever's going through, no one can take on your illness for you. Anybody take on that illness. So we're responsible for the things that we put in our bodies, the things that we're consuming. Um, so with that, I was like, all right, I got it. Something's got to give. I got to start doing some different shit and... Um, that's when I was like, okay, let me change my life. Mm -hmm. And not only can no one else take on our illness, but nobody else can do our healing work either. Like that's something that we have to, we have to do ourselves as well and make the decision to, to heal. You know, I, I truly believe that some people, and, and I knew this in theory, but I think 2020 really confirmed this for me. Some people just hold on to trauma just to have something to hold on to. Right. Right. And, and they feel like it's their identity. And so who am I without this trauma? Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I've, I've worked with people that have really sit in that. And I'm always like, girl, like, okay, but now what, you know? Um, and yeah, it's not our fault that these things have happened to us. Right. But um, I forget who says this, but it is our responsibility to, to do our healing. And if not, then you're going to stay miserable. Mm hmm. 100%. 100%. Um, so that turning point, did that lead to you making a decision to leave the country? Well, yeah, that was part of it. When my husband came home and was like, yo, I'm good on America. I'm trying to go. Um, I'm tired of this job. I'm tired of this. He sounds like me three months ago. <laughs> and I was like, you know, let's go. And it took me a, maybe 15 minutes in the conversation because I had just signed up for this women's group. And I was like, I'm about to be, you know, going to yoga class and having events here. Um, but I was like, girl, you can go. You ain't on probation no more. And I had said that when I was on probation. I, was I got my passport and I couldn't leave. I was trying to go to Thailand and Dubai. And my probation officer was like, no, you can go to Mexico for like a wedding or something. I need, I would need to see some paperwork, but you can't just be leaving the country all willy nilly, ma'am, your own papers. 
And so that was when I was like, you know what, when I get off of pro, I'm doing my life, you know? And I think that when you really lose your freedom like that mm -hmm. legally, when you legally can't do something, it kind of hits different, but we all create mental prisons, you know, um, and tell ourselves, like you said, can't, we can't do it or the reasons why we can't do something. So it's like, you don't know what you got till it's gone. When I lost my freedom, I realized how valuable my freedom was. And when I got it back, I was like, oh, I'm going to turn up legally, but I'm going to like really live my life um, because no one's going to tell me that I can't do something. If I want to do it, I'm going to do it. So that's when I was like, yeah, let's go. I can, you know, I can't not and that. It wasn't that, oh, I can't do this because of this. I can't. It was like, no, girl, mm -hmm. you ain't got to ask nobody. You're mm -hmm. free, you know, utilize your passport and live your life so that was really i think the reason that i didn't create those mental barriers and those you know that doubt that creeps mm -hmm. in with a lot of us and unfortunately it took me losing my freedom to to take advantage of it but you don't you shouldn't have to lose your freedom to um take full advantage of it but yeah that was really one of the turning points for me with leaving abroad moving abroad you know, I can I can relate to that. Now, I've I've never been on probation. However, my my mom's husband was really strict. I grew up in a really really strict household, and as a kid who was being sexually abused, he was even more strict on me, right? Because abusers, you guys, it's not even all about the sexual act, it's about the control, okay? So I was literally up under his thumb. So once I turned 18 and he went to jail because he actually went to jail for, for abusing me. Once I got that freedom, I was just like, oh, I need to get the hell up out of here because I just, I just felt like if I stayed in Chicago, I was going to die like 100%. It, and is yes, I'm not being dramatic. I truly felt if I stay in Chicago, I'm going to die. So I needed to leave. And it was just like, once I left, I never went back. I bounced all around, you know, the US, been to Mexico a couple of times, Jamaica a couple of times, you know, way overseas to Germany and stuff like that. And I absolutely love it. Like I love to travel. So having that restriction and not necessarily having any freedom really or just a real small amount of freedom i think that that dictated uh my decision to to bounce to as soon as i got the opportunity to do so 100 percent, and it was like the best decision that i could have that i could have done for for myself and uh for what i do right now because i i had to do a lot of of growing and I'm and not even I cannot be throwing shade at my family just in case you're listening to this you know but I, I just need I needed to leave Chicago in order to grow I felt suffocated I had maxed out on you know what I needed to learn and experience and be exposed to in Chicago it was time for something different and I needed to leave and as soon as I left see this is how you know you, you're operating in in purpose because as soon as I left I immediately got the healing that I needed because some random person she ended up not being random. She ended up being my mentor, but some random person, random to me, because I had never met her before, paid for, offered to pay for my therapy sessions. What if I would have stayed in Chicago? Yeah, yeah. You know, um, you know, in, in the black community, therapy is not even talked about um, because, you know, we don't want to be like crazy, but crazy as hell though right <laughs> right crazy. but like like yeah I'm, I never would have I I mean I know I, I could have because you know what God has planned is it's going to unfold but yeah I, I wouldn't have got the help that I needed had I stayed in Chicago so I really needed to leave for sure for sure you know Jazzy doing your speech you said she attracts amazing things when she's in alignment with her true self. I absolutely love that. I had to write that down. How are you able to stop people from projecting their fears onto you? Because like I said, there are so many people out there who want to leave, whether or not it's leave the state or leave the country, but they're talking to people 
who are fearful and I and put COVID aside, you guys. Let's let's put COVID aside. Let's let's pretend like COVID is not a thing. But they're talking to people who are fearful of traveling and they're projecting their fears. So how were you able to to avoid that or stop people from projecting their fears onto you? Yeah, so um growing up. My grandma was a scaredy cat. I don't know how, because she had 12 kids. So she wasn't scared of certain things she wasn't scared of. But um, even my and my great-grandmother and my cousin, and one of my favorite cousins does the same thing. But I will say something, like, I'll use a random example, but um, Airbnb. Like, oh, girl, you know, I'm going to go book an Airbnb. And this is when Airbnb first started. And she's like, well, what's that? It's someone's house. Like, you can rent out the house. And, you know, it's cheaper than a hotel, but it's a different experience. It's more, girl, what you mean? You're going to go stay in somebody's house? What if they kill you? And I'm just like, wait, what? Like, that's such a leap, ma'am. You know, like, what? So then I would ask people, well, what was your experience like when you rented an Airbnb? I ain't never rented no, oh, okay. So you're not talking, you're not speaking from experience. You're speaking from fear. Let me repel that because um, I don't want to live in fear. You know, I've noticed what I know what fear does to people because I've lived in fear before where, I mean, it's paralyzing. It really keeps you from moving forward. Mm -hmm. And it's a lot of the things that we're creating in our mind anyways, you know, because I've stayed in Airbnbs all around the world and no one has ever murdered me. So imagine (laughs) if I was like, okay, yeah, I'm gonna get murdered and didn't do that. Um, and that's just a small example so that you guys can visualize it. But this happens in a lot of different things. And um, when I said I was moving to Mexico, people were like, well, what about the cartel? I'm like, yo, we from the hood. What about the Bloods and the Crips? Like, you live on the same street where Nipsey Hussle got murdered. Like, aren't you scared? Like, I don't understand why y'all are, you know. Um, but they're comfortable in that, you know. So that's become their norm. But that stuff is still very scary to people. So I would ask, well, what was your experience like when you went to Mexico? Well, I've never been to Mexico. Okay, so you're not speaking from experience. Again, you're speaking from fear. And so I can't allow people to project those fears on me. Asking people their experience with something um, is usually what shuts it down because, again, they're not speaking from experience. They've never done those things. And they're not doing those things because of the fear. So um, I want to live fully and freely, bravely and boldly and allowing people to put their fears on me won't allow me to live that way. So if I have doubt, if I'm afraid, I'm going to do it anyway. And Mm -hmm. once you start doing things that you're afraid to do, it's like fear gasms. Like I feel amazing when I do something that scares me. Mm -hmm. It's like, Oh my God, like more, you know, and I'm not talking about jumping off of, you know, buildings or anything although I do want to go skydiving I'm not talking about risky things I'm talking about just living fully and doing the things that you want to do um so yeah I mean once you start to do that and live bravely it 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 uh, builds your confidence it helps you get aligned with your true purpose and I feel like when we are in alignment things happen like the moment that I left abroad like left America I had no idea what I was going to do really for money for, you know, but I've done wellness retreats in Mexico. You know, I was in video music videos in Bali and dancing in the jungle for, you know, different things and um, did stage plays in Thailand and I'm doing stand up comedy here in Vietnam. And these are all the things that I've always wanted to do. Um, And I feel that these opportunities are just aligning themselves, right? And it's because I was brave enough and bold enough to say, this is what I want. I want more from life than just this day-to-day living. Like, you know, I don't want to live the same day over and over and then said I lived. Um, That's just not living to me. And so, yeah, I feel like as soon as I left, opportunities started to present themselves in ways that I could have never even imagined. And that's what happens too. We want to know everything from our couch, right? Like, mm-hmm. well, I talk to people all the time and I help them that people that want to take the leap to move abroad and they want all the answers from their house sitting on the couch. And I'm like, you're visualizing things and that's okay, but you're trying to predict the future. When sometimes if you just remove yourself and you get in a different environment, you can attract different things that you wouldn't be able to attract on the couch it's like a woman that wants to get married but she never goes out right it's like the man is not going to come to the door and i mean maybe if this is a mailman or something and y'all i mean but that's rare that that happens you need to engage yourself in different environments where the man is that that you're going to want to attract 
same with living abroad or doing different things. Like there is no, I had no idea that I would be making money doing comedy. I had no idea that I could teach English to Chinese students online. And I didn't know these things until I got, I moved abroad, took the leap mm -hmm. and engaged with other people who were doing it, right? So mm -hmm. sometimes we don't need all the answers. We'll get those when we get in alignment and when we get into different environments. Mm -hmm. Oh my God. Oh my God. That was so good. You know, that, that last part you, you said, it reminded me of, I think it's a MIK quote that, you know, you don't have to see the whole staircase. I'm probably going to butcher it. You don't have to see the whole staircase. You just need to take the first step. Cause that's pretty much, you know, that's pretty much what, what you're saying. And I'm in agreement with you when you are operating in purpose, things just fall in alignment, not to say that life is going to be a hundred percent you know, stress free and problem free. I'm just saying that, you know, things may be a little bit easier and it will make more sense. Because when you are operating outside of alignment, trying to do everything that people are trying to tell you to do, things don't make sense. That's where the confusion and frustration come in at. The anxiety come in because you're trying to do and be what everybody else said to do and be instead of just being you. And operating in purpose and things start to make sense, you know, and th like the whole cartel situation, you're like, but what about the blood and the crips? It's like, for me, it was like the reverse because once I enter corporate America, like I didn't understand why people were so afraid. As an example, I didn't understand why people, women in particular, were so afraid to ask for a raise. And I would go in, I would ask for a raise. I, I didn't necessarily have no PowerPoint together. It was just like, you know, hey, I've been here for a certain amount of time. Guess what? I got this good degree, this good master's degree. So can I get that bump? And I would get it. And people and women in particular would look at me like, well, how did you have the courage to do that? And I'm like, chick, where I grew up from, that was nothing. I ain't scared of him. <laughs> like, do you know who my mother's husband was? I'm like, I ain't scared of him. So <laughs> <laughs> oh my god i can laugh about it but i'm serious though right because we can say not to cut you off but a lot of times we look at things as hindrance and i look at them as not just on the tool belt like okay boom my mom abandoned me gave me the tools to you know know that i can do things on my own and step up for myself and know that you know you gotta you gotta pull it together um, the abuse from my father, like that's another tool so that, you know, I'm not about to be nobody's punk. You ain't finna play me. You know, I'm, it, those are tools and we can either look at them as tools or hindrances. So yeah, I love how you use that example and flip it to your advantage, right? Because everything, if we really, that's the difference between becoming a victim and a victor It's like, okay, so what is this teaching you? And being um, realistic about life because every when I talk to people mm -hmm. there's all different types of trauma and some of them aren't as bad as the others and I don't like to minimize anyone's trauma so I don't even want to say it's not as bad because it's their trauma mm -hmm. and they, they measure it not us so with that I've noticed it's time and time again like okay so nobody like just escapes this life without some type of trauma mm -hmm. so maybe it's not that maybe it's to teach us certain things and what is the lesson in this and if you can look for the lesson then you can say, okay, remove yourself from being a victim and be like, okay, this is what this was teaching me. My upbringing is why I live abroad here because I'm not so close to my family. I have, I'm comfortable living abroad and being away from my family and talking to them on FaceTime or whatever that is versus needing to be around them all the time. Mm -hmm. But this is the ideal life for me. It may not be for everyone, but that these things, um, prepared me for my life now right instead of it hindering me so yeah I love how you look at and be like yo <laughs> the boss ain't, the, ain't no gang member you know he ain't gonna shoot me he gonna say yes or no and that's it and that's and that's it it's it's, it's all about it's all about mindset and and yeah. again you know it it took a while for me to get to that process too so let me not you know make it seem like I just woke up like one day and had that confidence no healing I had to heal <laughs> in order to make that in order to make that mindset um shift and you know it, it did take time to do that too so if you on your healing journey just know you can get to that point too sis you can get to that yeah. point too bro yeah. just just continue to do the work just continue to do the work so tell us about the the first country that you moved to and the decision to lead the country um because you moved from 
the U.S., you you mentioned it, Mexico, with your husband. Your husband came home one day in Mexico. But you guys lived in Mexico for a while. Instead of coming home, y'all decided to go to another country. Yeah. Talk, talk yeah. to us about that decision. <laughs> yeah, and it's crazy because it started out with us saying, okay, let's do it for six months um, and see, you know, what happens. But really, it was like, okay, we'll do it for six months, come back home, and then mm -hmm. maybe we'll live abroad for six months out of the year. Um, so we started with Mexico. I really wanted to go to Thailand first. However, looking into visas and things like that, Mexico granted six months from the gate with no type of um, applications or anything. Everyone is granted six months from America. So um, we're like, okay, we saved enough money. We go for six months, come on home and figure out life from there. But we were in Playa del Carmen, which is all in the Yucatan, and it's off the beach. But everybody know what Playa, where Playa del yeah. Carmen is now. Yeah. Um, it yeah. wasn't so we know. Mm -hmm. but yeah, it's up not far from Tulum, y'all, the new mm -hmm. Hotlanta. Right. Um, but yeah, we were there, and um, a few, like maybe three weeks, four weeks in of running on the beach and eating fresh mangoes and tortillas and shit. We're like, wait a minute, what are we about to go back? What are we going back? <laughs> We need to figure out how to make this our life because this is amazing. And this is where, I, I mean, I felt it was so healing living by the water. I live by the water now um, again. And it's just like living by the water, eating fresh fruits and coconut and fresh juice. And it's something fruit. about that water, man. Yeah. Yes. And, you know, just having control of our time. My uh, husband was an electrician by trade, but an artist at heart. And so um, him creating artwork and me being able to focus on my health, my health and well-being, which is a value of mine. Um, I was like, yo, this this is living, you know, so if we go back home because we had sold everything. I'm like, we're going to have to get another car and go, you know, get another apartment and furniture for the apartment. Like, why? What? Why would we go back? So it was like, let's figure out how we can make this our lives. And um they said in that intention, things started to unfold and um, it worked out. So we taught, we, tr we picked Mexico because of the visa and it being close to home in case anything popped off. It's nothing but a flight, yeah. you know, but, yeah. and once we did um, six months there, we were felt more comfortable. Like, okay, we've maintained ourselves. We've learned a lot. We can do this. And so we stayed in Mexico for about nine or 10 months and, uh, one day I just had the idea of Bali popped up in my mind. And so I kind of wrote it on Facebook. Um, you know, they say, what's on your mind? And all I wrote was Bali. And um, the next day my husband looked up flights and they were like $300 from LA to Bali one way. And so we're like, all right, let's go to Bali, you know, um, and check it out. See, you know, and that's where I started my book. I started writing my book there. And I got a lot of writing done. He did a lot of art there. And yeah, it was just amazing. And we're like, this, what's next? You know, like mm -hmm. it, 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 it just fit. It worked. And once, you know, with traveling, like you want to see more, you want to do more. And just the experience, I've never felt so alive um, with living abroad and, and having control of my entire day. And just experiencing newness. Everything around you is new. Everything's an experience. Going to the restaurant is an experience. Walking down the street is, is an experience because you're in these new environments, you know, and you know nothing. And that's the ultimate way to have beginner's mind, um, which is the meditation practice and a, mind, a mindfulness practice that we're really into. Um, so, yeah, girl, we got hooked. Just like people that get one tattoo and then they want another. Then they, you know, have 30,000. So, yeah, it's just like this is, is, is life. And we're meeting so many wonderful people. We're learning so many different things about ourselves. I took chakra healing courses and yoga, you know, and it was just like, it just, it's amazing. It's such an amazing life. And this is, I feel like I'm living my dream um, mm. with this lifestyle. I love that. I, I want to point out something that you said, because you said, you know, once y'all made that leap from Mexico to Bali, you just like, okay, yeah, like, what's next? We can do this. You know, we love this. We can do this. And so you literally just started bouncing around, right? I think some people are afraid that they're going to love it. 
They are afraid of the possibility. Like, what if I make the leap and nothing bad happens? It actually works out. Like, that's a legit fear that some people have. And that will stop them from, from moving too, you know, because I was kind of like the, the same way, even though I was bouncing around within the, within the U.S., but it's like, you couldn't keep me off a plane because I'm just like, okay. Like, I was that person I would just say <laughs> to my bestie the other day. Um, Cause I was telling her how much I miss travel because right now I, I just don't feel comfortable getting on a plane and going to the airport me personally, but I'm that woman who was searched for a plane ticket at like noon on a Friday and buy a plane ticket to leave 7, 8, 7 PM that same Friday and just be gone for the weekend. So not having that opportunity, you know, to do that, you know, it's, it's starting to, it's starting to, to wear me down. But once I started traveling, it's just, it's like, I got, it's like, I got addicted to it. And the same way with achieving my goals, it was like, once I left Chicago and I did die, cause that's, that's another thing too. We think the world's going to, it's going to blow up. No, once you take that first step and you realize, okay, I didn't die. I didn't get, you know, electrocuted by lightning or anything like that. So it's okay. Then I took another step. I went after another goal, but so many people are just so paralyzed. They don't want to even take the first step. And they're just like, sis, just make the first move. Right. And with that, fear, I think you need to be for me. I'm more afraid of not living my life. Like this is, it's our life and we're here to live. And I don't think we're here to pay bills and die, sit in traffic and die you know, allow society to tell us what we should be doing and die. Um, we have control over our lives. And that is when I go back to not having control over my life. Like I remember being on house arrest and one in a snicker bar and I don't eat Snickers anymore, but one in a snicker bar at 10 PM and couldn't go because I yeah, had you? Yes, you have a curfew. You can't just leave in and out of your house. So really when you, can't do something legally it hits different to where you're like yo ain't nobody gonna tell me i can't live my life anymore so now i'm more afraid of not taking at full advantage of our of my freedom we're free you know our ancestors were not our ancestors could not do the things that we're able to do now and so with remembering where i came from and where like having to go i, I mean i could not live this life years ago where, i mean every tuesday i had to report to jail and stay there till thursday then I'm on house arrest where I can't even move, you know, go to my friend's house if I want, go to the store if I want, and then being on probation for five years, not being able to move, you know. So now that I have my life back, I'm like, what's stopping me, you know, besides the fear? And I'm more afraid of dying before I live freely and fully, bravely and boldly. So, um, yeah, I mean, it's fearful anyways, but you, have, I think you should be more afraid of dying with all of these goals and these aspirations inside of you um you know live your life live your life please live your life please live this live please just live your life and who cares what people think you don't have to worry about that because a lot of people don't even know what they think of themselves and you know um i'm so grateful that i've been i'm comfortable enough and confident enough to say this is my life and i'm gonna do what the hell i want with it you know, nobody will tell me again, like, y'all are not my probation officer. <laughs> you will not tell me how to live my life and what to do with it. Um, yeah, that's what I'm more afraid of. It's, it's just not living my life. Mm -hmm. I love that. I had a, a, a podcast interview be, before yours. I sat down and talked to um, Naheem and his dad, Dash. He's King Na across social media. And in his, in doing that conversation, you know, because I asked him, um, so your community and your fans, are they giving you the grace and the space to grow up? Because he stepped out on the scene. He was like eight years old. And he's 15 now. And he's like, no. They're not. He was like, but it is not my job to um, get somebody else to allow me to be who I am right now. He was like, it's not my job to do that. He was like, a lot of people, because he came out on scene, he was like eight or nine years old as a motivational speaker. He said, there are so many people who want to keep me at that nine-year-old little boy in that video. He was like, it's not, it's not my, my job to, to convince them to let me to let me be and let me grow up. I was like, come through 
15 year old come through so i'm like man i'm about to take that advice my myself but uh permission like i mean you don't need to have permission unless you know you're on probation (laughs) you don't need permission you do not need permission stop waiting for someone to tell you who you are or tell you what you should do Mm -hmm. do what the hell you want to do i listen to this song it's an old school song devin the dude um he's outside he's from houston and he has a song that says do what the f you want to do you know because it's only you that has to deal with the consequences anyway so just live your life you know why are we waiting for permission mm-hmm. absolutely uh, absolutely program. okay unless it's with sex and content consent yes but other than that living your life you don't need permission to live right absolutely absolutely but okay so i gotta ask how does it feel to be black living in another country? How does it feel? I feel like that. How does it feel to be black living in America? So <laughs> it don't feel like that um, is what I'll say. Um, you know, I think an important thing to do when you li- leave America is leave the American mindset there. Don't pack that with you. Um, you know, and so with that, I feel seen here. And a lot of people, when I share my experiences online, on, on my YouTube channel and stuff, people are like, well, oh, my goodness, I would flip if someone touched my hair or, if, you know, people did this and that. And um, they were staring at me. And to me, I have to look check the facts. OK, here it is. I live in Vietnam. I live in an area in Vietnam where and um, I live in Da Nang by the beach and it's a smaller town. I'm walking in a small town down these neighborhoods, like on people's block where they know everybody. I'm a black woman with locks. I look different. Of course, they're going to look. Some of, and then we're in Asia where it's a, uh, people look the same. They, they don't look like me. So if I'm walking down the street and I look very different, people are going to look. If they have questions about my hair, they're going to ask me, wow, is your hair real? Can I touch it? Whatever. And, um, I remind myself, like, if you go to the museum and you see something beautiful, you look, you stare, you know, you may want to take a picture of it. Now, if you're repulsed by it, you're going to look away. And so with people looking and engaging with me, it's because I'm different. And I'm also outside of my comfort zone, walking through these neighborhoods um, where some people have never left again. Like, they've never left this town. They've never left Vietnam. Even different Asians look so very similar. And with America, as we take for granted us, um, being a melting pot. So I remember being in high school knowing per- like Persians and Koreans and Japanese kids or Salvadorian, you know, like all of these different people. Mm-hmm. Um, and these people don't have that same privilege. So people are going to stare. They're going to look. They want to take photos with you. And I just act like I, they've seen my Netflix special that I'm going to get. And, um, they, you know, I'm a celebrity. And so they want to take pictures with me. So I'm not going to allow those things to hinder my experience here. I think it's a great privilege to be able to live outside of your home country. And I don't allow it. I don't allow it to bother me. Other than that, people are very welcoming. They're very kind. They say hello. Um, you know, kids come up to me and want to know where I'm from and talk to me and, um, old people want to touch my hair and I don't look at it as racism or disrespect. Um, it's just, you're, you're, you're different, you know, it and sounds like curiosity. Yeah. It's, it's curiosity. That's exactly what it is. So with knowing that, um, yeah, I feel seen and I feel respected. I'm not scared living abroad. Um, and it's an experience like no other. So I actually like being a black woman abroad um I like the it, different experiences and yeah it's different sometimes it gets on my nerves I will admit you know if I'm PMSing that week I don't I'll order food in so I'm like y'all not gonna b- bother me in this grocery store today you know I just want to get in and out but yeah the more they see us and I think that's the thing too if we did this more and had and exposed people to us more um you know it would get a little easier but I don't mind it I'm shaking my head because it's like you guys, did y'all just hear what she said? She said she feels seen. She lives in Vietnam. If we wasn't clear about that at the beginning of the episode, she lives in Vietnam. And that is just like so heartbreaking that you have to leave the country to feel seen as a black woman, you know? And I, I just think it's just so 
mind boggling to me that you say leave that American mindset in America because it's not like that in you know other countries and not and not to say that every country is like that because you you could run to a country where it's you know but to just leave that that mindset it was just like man because even Amber says something similar um, to what you just said as well you know about um, not feeling worried that when you walk into a store that the, you know, store, store clerk or owner are going to look at you as if you are about to steal something. Like they looking at you because they're in awe of you. Cause it's like, wow, where you come from? Like, <laughs> like who is this person? In the store where someone, they were following me and I was like, got my phone out and started recording. I was like, I'm not going to steal nothing. And she literally was trying to help me. Like she didn't want me to have to hold anything. Like, let me help assist you. And here it is. I'm thinking like, oh, you think I'm finna steal? You know, and we have to remember like, where are we getting these things from? And I had to think about, it. I was like, girl, this is not a uh, minister society where you're in this school with the Asian people. You know, and that's what sometimes we don't realize that subconsciously that is what we're pulling from, right? Not even lived experience or lived experience, but past lived experiences. And even if it was something that happened before, if we're related to new experiences, then we're not truly living. We're just doing the, having the same experience over and over again, right? Yeah. That's why beginner's mind is so important. Um, and yeah, and I was like, I felt so silly after that. I was like, oh, wow, she's really just trying to help me. And here it is, I'm assuming that she thinks I'm going to steal, right? When she's just trying to give me extraordinary uh, customer service and feel like, oh, you shouldn't have to hold anything. Let me hold that for you as you're browse in the store so yeah um those things do happen to where we have to be like okay it ain't what it is or what we think it is all the time mm -hmm. don't believe everything you think <laughs> don't believe everything you think <laughs> sit on that for a second you guys meditate on that for 15 minutes a day don't believe everything that you think but you know again um that goes back to exposure putting yourself in situations that are different from what all you know because you know living here in in america you, i don't got to tell you how it is living here living in america as a black woman or a black person period whether you male or, or or female you know so trauma you take that trauma where we go but just like with baggage going from relationship to the relationship you need to leave that baggage in the previous relationship before you go to the next relationship same way is what i'm getting what you're saying is if you're gonna go from country to country leave that american mindset in america and be open to possibilities in another country you know because because it's so crazy because even me leaving america when i went over to to germany i realized like not everybody like americans not everybody like us over here like <laughs> we may be a little considered over here in 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 america because it's a it's a it's a little bit different you know because i was just tripping out because even uh, you know in germany it was like the middle of the day everything shut down because everybody takes a break for like an hour or two and go I home and girl. i go downstairs and they napping they got their little cot out napping at 12 and i'm like oh let me be quiet and i love that because why not you we all need naps why do we stop taking naps in kindergarten life get hard after five that's when you need the most it's like what it's so i love those different things um and you see people just chilling here it's not like that go 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 they'll bring their children to work you know um you may see a child at the restaurant or here or there whatever right and it's like yeah it's just i love the, the difference of, of rules or i guess normalities here um, yeah things are more laid back and free and you're able to be a person and a human you know versus all these rules that america puts mm -hmm. on. 100%, 100%. Mind blowing when I went over to Germany. Mind blowing. And I went over to Germany, Germany for Oktoberfest. And oh, nice. it, let me tell you, let me tell you about the trip. This is something, this is a, a prime example of what Jazzy talked about earlier about not projecting people's fears on onto you. Because I went to Germany with a group of white people. I was the only black person in this group. And we went to Oktoberfest. For those of you who don't know what Oktoberfest is, it's a beer festival. Yeah. I don't drink beer. And even if I did, that wasn't the type of beer that I'd be drinking over at Oktoberfest. So these 
Yeah. Right. So they literally gave me, <laughs> schooled me on beer before we went over to, to Germany. So we will go hang out um, and, you know, drink different types of beer so I can have an idea of what type of beer I will want to drink if that's what I choose to do. You know, just help it, helping me, helping to prepare me for Oktoberfest. But yeah, when I tell you that was the best time of my life, and even once I got to Oktoberfest, I was a speckle. It wasn't that many. Maybe I probably saw maybe one or two black people, but this was a festival of number white people. I had the time of my life. Like Germany is one of my favorite countries. That's how much I, I fell in love with Germany, you know? And I probably never would have had that experience had I not said, okay. It's okay, Keisha. I know you won't be the only black person in this little group, but that's okay because this is going to be an experience of a lifetime. And I was right. It was an experience of a, of a lifetime. So sometimes we need to take advantage of opportunities, even if they don't look the way we want them to look. Because anybody else would say, oh, I ain't going over to Germany with no group of white people that I don't barely know. Right. Not me. I had told this woman, hey, next time you go somewhere, let me know because I love to travel. And she came and was like, hey, we going over to Germany for Oktoberfest. I was like, I don't know where Oktoberfest is, but okay, I'm down. <laughs> it's the life, right? Because you don't know anything about it. So what are you saying no to? Exactly. Like, so yes, yeah, I, I oh, want to yeah. experience that, right? And then you had an amazing experience. And if you didn't like it, then you know what you what you don't like, right? Exactly. Exactly. But had I not gone, I wouldn't. I wouldn't know either way. I love that. that saying we don't like some stuff that we ain't never even had or mm -hmm. tried before, right? So how you know you don't like it? How you know you don't know to? Yes, man. Hopefully, somebody in the background heard that. That's gonna set somebody. That's gonna set somebody free. Okay, Jazzy, give us some tips. Tips on where to start and how to make the transition if we contemplate living abroad. Living abroad. Do we need a lot of money? Do we need a whole bunch of money going abroad? Depends, right, right. It depends on your lifestyle. It depends on what you do. I've seen people that like to party, for example, who run through their budget because they're always in the club and, you know, buying drugs and, and drinking a lot. Um, so do your research. Um, there's websites you can go to. And I have a ebook um, coming out in the next few weeks um, that kind of walks you through, like picking the plays, what questions to ask yourself, how much money, how to calculate the money that you're trying to save. Um, but yeah, cal like do some research on some places and look up like as if you were going to move tomorrow. So look up some apartments, you know, that you are drawn to. What's that price? Um, what's the cost of that? Looking up food. Are you going to eat out? Are you going to eat at home? Um, there's a X experience. It's like expatrian.com where it kind of compares where the cost of living to different price, different places. And if you do that, you can calculate, like how many months do you think you need to save? We took six months um, of savings to move, you know, and live because that's how long we decided that we were going to go. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, a crunch in case anything happens, you know, calculate that in. But yeah, you have to look at your lifestyle. So there is apartments that you can get for a few hundred dollars or some people move abroad and they still have thousands of dollars of rent. Um, some countries are more expensive than others, a lot more expensive than others. You know, um, some places are fully furnished. Like my apartment came moving ready with everything. Um, so I didn't have to bring any, you know, furniture and stuff like that. Um, yeah, so just ask you, like, do some research and figure that out. But, you know, some people, and then it's your lifestyle. Some people move abroad with next to nothing because they're going to house sit um, or mm -hmm. couch surge or it, go work in a hostel in exchange for a bed, you know. So um, with me, I'm like, I need my own place. I need a clean shower, you know, and that's so based on your personality and your lifestyle, that's going to factor, take those factors in. Um, but yeah, you don't. I would say, to answer the question shortly, you probably don't need as much as you think. Mm -hmm. And that's what a lot of people are like, oh, I need, you know, 50000 to do this, blah, blah, blah. and a lot of places are not as expensive as America. So with that, you probably don't need as much as you think. Um, and then be smart with your money, manage your money well, you know, because people do kind of blow through things, turning up for the gram and all that other stuff. So um, be mindful of that. 
And then also if you work remotely, that's great, you know, because then you have your money coming in yeah. already. Um, and that's one good thing about COVID is that a lot of jobs are now remote and will continue to be remote. So take mm-hmm. advantage of that, you know, mm-hmm. and even if you want to take a month or two to do it and try, get your feet wet. I am, I think we were more comfortable taking the leap because we're like, okay, we're going to do this for a few months. Right. And then we got hooked and was like, oh, hell no. What are we going back to? So it was like, all right, we can do this for a few months. So even start off then, right. You don't have to say, oh, I'm going to, move abroad forever and try to plan out the rest of your life abroad. Take it day by day with anything. That's all we can do, really. And I think with um, this pandemic, COVID has shown us that there's no such thing as certainty. This shit happened and changed everything very quickly. Mm -hmm. Um, If you were to tell, if I was to sit here a year ago and tell you what this year would have looked like or last year would have looked like for us, we would have, you wouldn't have believed me, right? It's like that girl crazy. She sounded like a conspiracy theorist, you know? Um, mm-hmm. So with that, we never know what's going to happen anyways. And so what you think that you know, you don't really have an idea about it. So why not take the leap and, and live abroad? Um, yeah, you have a false sense of, of security and of, of certainty anyway. So yeah, just try to try it. And then just just try bet on yourself, you know, and remember that America ain't going on where they, if you leave, it ain't like you can't get back in. So if it doesn't work out, go back home, take your ass back home, right? And that was our thing too. Like, if it don't work, we'll go back home. And it's been over three years now and I ain't been back and haven't had to go back and look at that. Like, had I been so worried about it and not tried it or kept putting it off, then I wouldn't have had an amazing three years the most amazing three years of my life, so. That's awesome. That's awesome. You had me cracking up when you say America and then close, you can always go back. You know, um, a friend of mine said something similar to me when um, I was debating on whether or not I was going to go natural because I'm debating like, oh, I don't want to go natural, whatever. And she was like, girl, you can always perm your hair again. I was like, you sure right. I sure can. Let me just go again. <laughs> go natural well, I've been part, like oh girl you you went natural on me i ain't fooling with you no more like that lie is still long down go get that box and you'll be fine so yeah, yeah. the thing yeah. is locks you know like well, i've been wanting locks for so long and i finally did it and it's like okay if you don't like it cut them off or comb them out and start on over you know or go get a weave, whatever you want to do. But I'm so grateful that I did it. It's a wonderful lifestyle. I mean, wonderful hairstyle for my life abroad anyway, because it makes my hair much more manageable. I don't need as many products. And um, yeah, it works. But why not? You know, just try it. Just I don't know why we think we want to know everything. Don't know shit anyway. We want to know how everything going to turn out. You don't know until you try it. And it's, it's life. Be okay with, you know, the unknown. Yeah, it's okay, sis. It's okay. <laughs> I need to make that the title of the podcast. I was like, it's okay, sis. It's, it's okay. okay. <laughs> Your hair is beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. So it's like, why not try it out? Why not? But, uh, Josh, this has been amazing. I was cracking up throughout this whole episode. So you guys got to watch us over on Facebook or YouTube. Um, see me over here cracking up. This was amazing. You are I'm amazing. To you, girl. I'm like, okay, friend. <laughs> New friend. Yes. And are you writing a book? How? Huh? Are you writing a book? I already have a book. <laughs> Okay, yes, please send me the link to that because the whole time you're talking, I was like, I want to know more. I want to know more without, like, you know, asking y'all your business here. Uh, but yeah, I would love to read that book. So please send me the link. So I, is it on, uh, is it an ebook? No, it's, it's Amazon. Okay, but okay. You, you can, um, there's a digital version on my website as well, okay. keishawood.com forward slash. But I can see you. I can send you the link. But thank you, Daniel. Thank you. Yes. Thank you, girl. <laughs> this has been uh, amazing. But before speaking of books, before I let you go, um, I like to ask every guest what book or audible book that they either read or listened to that has inspired them in in some way. Yeah, I'm always reading. Um, the book I'm reading now is called "We Hear You," which is a book on um, how to validate people when we're speaking, and um, it's a great way to improve relationships. You know, but that's what I'm currently reading. Um, 
almost halfway. I'm almost done with that. It's a really, really good book. And you realize like how a lot of times we mean well when we're communicating with people, but we still leave people feeling like they unheard. Um, and I can identify with that, especially in relationships where you're like, damn, this is what I really needed you to say, you know? Um, so that's a really good book. It's very eye opening and I'm always about bettering myself and my communications with others. But, um, other than that, I think the book that's had the biggest impact on me and my life, it was so many, but, uh, of course the acclimates and, but the four agreements, we'll say that because ah. those four agreements are so powerful, you know, <laughs> and the most important one is don't take things personal and we do that all the time mm -hmm. um ain't nothing about us that 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 somebody else is doing has nothing to do with us right mm -hmm. um and then always doing our best being impeccable with our word and you know i just love that book um but i love reading i love books and I, we can go on all day that could be a whole other <laughs> podcast it's just what books have impacted my life and i love ayana van Zandt, um her books peace um, to from broken pieces. Um, one day my soul just opened up. Um, and that's a great book. It's like forty days and forty nights of work, and she just gives you these words, and you're like shifting through. Because um, you know Ayana will get your life um, if you can look past the delivery of things, right? Um, yeah. And yeah, I mean, there's so many. I, I love reading. I and the Law of Attraction is an amazing book. Mm -hmm. um as well and it shows us how what do you key it oh with them squeaky shoes anyway stay focused um in the hallway again <laughs> um yeah the law of attraction is a really powerful book too because it shows us how we are where we are because of how we think and that's an eric thomas quote though which is a different book but um yeah, a lot of the things that we're attracting in life today, you know, especially as adults, like in our childhood, you know, a lot of things we don't have power over, but a lot of the things we're manifesting, you know, through the power of our thoughts. And I see people online that be like, F my life, or, you know, I was doing a raffle the other night, um, an MC here, and the girl was like, I never win anything. And I was like, oh, girl, get away from me with that uh, energy out. Oh. You think that you like to put those kind of things out? Because I'm like, I'm always winning. Everything's working in my favor. Only good will come from this. I've even said that during this pandemic. And that's worked for me, you know. Um, I know that a lot of people have died and have had unfortunate situations here. But I like to always believe that everything is for my greater good. Um, and that's happens. And I know that's through what I'm putting out there into the universe and manifesting. So, yeah, there's so many books. I love, love, love to read. Um, Power of the Subconscious Mind, you know, uh, Think and Grow Rich. All those books are really about the mindset and how to shift our thinking. Because when we change our thinking, we change our life. And again, we are where we are because of how we think. Some people like have had the same experiences as us and they're in far worse uh, situations. And it's because yeah. of the way that they're thinking, right? I watched these um, videos on YouTube. It's the white underbelly. And it's about like, it's all kind of people from different walks of life, but mainly they're drug addicts and prostitutes and different and pimps and things like that. And I've always loved those kind of stories of diversity. Mm -hmm. But the whole, the one thing that I've noticed is they're all the same story that they have is trauma as children, right? And how we've had the same, just similar situations or different traumas too. But look at our lives versus like people who have still done that, but are not able to heal or move past it. And it's because of the way they think they think right and so that's mm -hmm. why they turn to addiction and different things so yeah just changing this up here um yeah what we're telling ourselves is, is how to really change our lives so any books about that i'm all for it okay okay you have a couple of them we hear you i'm gonna have to check and see if that's on if that's on audible because that that sounds like a really good book. And I've never heard of the the white underbelly. And you said that's on YouTube, right? Yeah, that's YouTube. That yeah. It's, I mean, being from South Central, I don't know. I've always loved those kind of movies and stories, yeah. you know. Um, and just yeah, listening. Can you hear me? It said unstable internet. Okay, yeah. Um, just hearing those kind of different stories. It and it also reminds me of how different my life could be. I never want to forget, you yeah. know. Um, about where I come from and the grace that I have, you know, because I was one decision away from that life. And I never want to forget that so that I, every day I remember that, like, I'm always one decision 
away from a, a completely different life. Yeah. Um, and the power of our choices, you know, and that's what my story is a lot about because I was choosing to do one thing and my life looked like something else. And the moment that I decided to choose differently and make better choices, my life totally transformed. And so yeah. I never want to forget that. And that's what those stories remind me. Mm, I love that. Yeah, I love a good come up story too. And it's probably because of that you so beautifully, you know, communicated that. I think that's the same reason why I love a, a good come up story. Yeah. So I never forget. And 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 plus I pull strength from, you know, um other people's triumphs. I pull yeah. strength from that. Yeah. You know, um, it also reminds me too that there is a God and he's working every day, all day, even when we don't think so. He's working every day, all day. So yeah, thank you for that. So one last question before I let you go. When describing the meaning of living your truth, complete this phrase. I'm gonna give you to two words and you tell me what your third word is, okay? Mm -hmm. Self-awareness, purpose, and... Hmm. Is it resiliency? My vulnerability. I'm always like, one word, can I get two? Uh, follow the rules, Jazzy. It's, uh, <laughs> yeah, resiliency. What are your two words then? What's your two words? Yes, resiliency and vulnerability. <sighs> yes. Yeah. Yes. Absolutely. And, and resiliency, if we want to put it in order. But yeah, 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 yeah. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. You know, vulnerability is something that I had to get used to allow myself to be vulnerable because when you grow up in an abusive household, it's the last thing you want to do is show your vulnerability. But I had to do that um, in order to truly heal uh, from that trauma and resiliency, man, going through that, I became really resilient. Once I got out, of, out into the world, that's when I really realized just how resilient I was, you know, because of the trauma that you know that I experienced and because of the environment that I grew up in you know it helped to build that that muscle again switching how you look at things yeah. I had to switch how I look at things so I love those two words vulnerability and resiliency I love that I love that but thank you friend my new best friend Yes, right. We definitely have to stay connected. I love your energy, um, your story and yeah. Uh, the work that you do. So any way that I could support you, please let me know. Um, but this was a great, great, great conversation. Great conversation. So thank you so much for reaching out. Um, and I'm glad that I got to uh, speak at the Miracle Morning and, and yeah, yeah and, and impact others. So that's our purpose, right? Is to, our story is not our own. Mm -hmm. And that's where I think a lot of times we have to let go of that shame. And that's why I say, like, this is what happened, but this is where I am now, right? And I don't have to hide those different parts of me mm -hmm. because um, they're beautiful, too. Absolutely. Absolutely. Thank you, Fred. Thank you. Thank you for having me. This was such a fun episode. Jazzy is such a super cool person. And make sure to follow her over on Instagram. You can find her at Black Digital Nomad. And then let her know what you thought about our conversation here on the podcast. You know, I really want you to take the time, really think about, really meditate on your home environment. You know, having peace in your home helps you to show up fully and authentically yourself when you walk out into the world. Our home should be the place where we go to regroup, when we need to refuel, when we need to just re-energize because this world will suck all of the life and energy up out of you, right? And if your home is not providing you the space that you need to do these things, you know, then change must happen. And it's your job to make that change happen. Life is hard enough and not having a sanctuary that provides the support that you need, it just makes life even worse. So if you're contemplating on moving to another city or to another state because you know it's the best move for you to make for you, I encourage you to do so. I mean, like for real, what would you lose? At the very least, you know, you move to a new place in a new city, new town, you absolutely hate it. And then what you do, you move back home, you move back to your home state. I mean, 
it's okay. If that happens, then it just happens, all right? It doesn't mean that you're a failure. Many people leave and then go back home. It doesn't mean that they're a failure. You know why you're not a failure? Because you took action, because you did something about it. And that says more than anybody who would judge you because you left and then had to come back, all right? Look at it as a reset. If you leave and then have to come back home, look at it as a reset and then take another stab at it. No one said that you only get one opportunity to leave your state and get it right. You have as many opportunities as you're willing to afford yourself to have. Sit on that for a second. Now, in Jazzy's case, she didn't have the best relationship with her parents, right? But she was still able to live her purpose-driven life once she made a decision to change her home environment. Maybe you can relate to her story. Or maybe you can relate to my story on some on some level. Or maybe you thought about how your life could have turned out differently if you just had some really supportive parents, right? Like how many times have how many times have you thought, man, if my if my mom would just have supported me a little bit more in this area, I'd be so much better off in this area or in this season of my life. I ain't gonna lie. I've had that thoughts too. If you listening to this on your favorite podcast platform, I'm raising my hand right now because I've definitely had those, those same thoughts. Well, family, if I just describe you, if you are <laughs> in this with me, you had those exact same thoughts, then we're going to have a conversation about the possibility, about that possibility next week. Like next week, we're going to sit down and talk about what it actually looks like when you have super supportive parents. Like we, we're going to talk about that next week because yes, it plays a part in your decision to operate in purpose. Family, thank you so much for taking the time to listen to my podcast every single week. If you need help understanding how your home environment affects your decisions, then head on over to strategizeyourvision.com for more information. Also note that all Audible recommendations given on any episode are linked in the show notes and you can try Audible for free. You get your first month's free, so definitely take advantage of it. Please remember to leave a five-star rating and subscribe on your favorite podcast platform. And don't forget to click the join community link that's in the show notes so we can stay connected and continue the conversation. Family, as you know, I said a lot to go to touch one million hearts within the first two years of the podcast, and I can only do it with your help. So please remember to download each episode, share this conversation with at least four people you know, and repost on your favorite social media platform. Family, I appreciate you. Has anybody told you that yet today? Has anybody told you today that they appreciate you? Well, I do. I appreciate you. And my heart is filled with so much gratitude. So until next time, always remember that you are enough and your truth is beautiful.